Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The mayor has appointed Councilmember Jolie Justice to spearhead the new Citizen Task Force on Violence. The mayor appointed 17 community members as well. The task force will gather facts and data to recommend pragmatic policies and best practices about how we as a city can prevent, address, and respond to violence in all its forms. So today I am proud to announce, along with my friend and colleague, uh, Councilwoman Jolie Justice of the 4th uh, District, a Citizens Task Force on Violence. The mission of this task force is multifactorial. First, they're to gather facts, data, and information using subject matter experts that are available to them in the form of the FBI, ATF, uh, the police department, all sorts of places and people who deal with violence every day to find out what we can do in a collaborative, cohesive way to present fixes, not just conversation, fixes for some of these problems to the extent that we can in terms of ordinances, legislations, or policies that we can enact. We are going to come up with ideas that we will either be able to implement here locally or we will be able to take evidence-based facts to Jefferson City and make our case for why we need to have change there. We know there are lots of things we don't have control over. Funding for mental health, we get it. That's a tough issue to crack. Um, gun safety, we understand the political state of where we are. That does not mean that we can't come up with incremental changes that will make a difference. And if it makes a difference for one family, then this was a success. I believe this will be successful for the entire community. The mayor expects the committee to present its recommendations within 12 months. The new $74 million Leon Jordan campus ribbon cutting was held this week. City officials, representatives from KCPD, and community leaders all joined in the opening of this new campus, which includes a new East Patrol Division station and a new regional crime lab. It's a great day to be celebrating what I think is not only a magnificent structure, two magnificent structures actually, but structures that have had a major impact on this entire neighborhood. 66 buildings were demolished for creation of this campus and architectural components from some of those buildings were salvaged for, re salvaged for reuse and integration into the fabric of the new police buildings. I had found an old condemned building that probably needed to be gone a long time ago with a roof that was bad for at least 50 years. Through much sacrifice we refurbished that building to what I thought at the time was one of the prettiest churches in the city. And it was a little challenging to accept the fact that to celebrate today, somebody had to make the sacrifice. And so to see part of the community, part of those who have made the sacrifice, we do have mixed emotions but yet we can celebrate with the city of Kansas City because we too want the city to be a safer place to live. Three, two, one, celebrate. Residents were able to tour the new campus and city agencies and community groups were there on hand to provide information about projects and services. The campus is located at 27th and Prospect Avenue. It was funded by voter-approved public safety sales tax. All of us know that hand washing is the key to help prevent colds and other illnesses, but did you know that you might not be doing it right? It's easy to miss germy areas on your hands. Well, any outbreak occurs because one person is infecting on average more than one person so the outbreak grows. If you can do things to slow that down so that each person that becomes infected is less likely to infect more than less than one person then the outbreak goes away and it turns out that with a lot of things hand washing is one of the most important things that we can do. Remember to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds using soap and warm water. And when you cough or sneeze, try to do it into your upper sleeve. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Every year, KC Parks plans a wide variety of winter holiday events, and this year is no exception. The Fairy Princess returns to the Kansas City Museum at Corinthian Hall to spread holiday cheer the first three weekends of December. Your child will share their holiday wishes with the Fairy Princess and get a picture taken. You'll have fun making holiday arts and crafts and hearing stories from local storytellers. And don't forget to pick up a sweet treat before you go. Visit KansasCityMuseum.org for all the details. Take a break from the present and experience a 19th century Christmas with a visit from St. Nicholas on Saturday, December 5th at the Shoal Creek Living History Museum. Enjoy a walking tour through holiday decorated homes and log cabins while reenactors bring the village to life. Experience a Civil War encampment, warm up by the pot-bellied stove, and conclude your visit with a horse-drawn sleigh ride through the rolling hills of Hodge Park. This event is $5 per person and free for those five years and under. Visit kcparks.org for more information. Santa's Wonderlands return to KC Parks the first weekend of December. Spend an evening celebrating with festive live music and entertainment by the Starlight Stars and Rock and Rob, light displays, and of course, a visit from Santa and his friends. The events are free and take place at Gillen Park on Friday, December 4th from 6 to 8 p.m. and at Penguin Park on Saturday, December the 5th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Details are at kcparks.org. Do you like ugly Christmas sweaters? If so, you need to sign up for the Kris Kringle Ugly Sweater 5K on December the 12th. The wintry cross-country course will take you up and down hills, over fields, and all through historic Swope Park. All those pre-registered receive a free ugly sweater with your entry fee. More at kcparks.org. For more information about these and other events, visit the Parks and Recreation website at kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. It's here. It's running. You want to ride. But before anyone can board, the KC Streetcar team must conduct safety testing of all vehicles, tracks, and systems. So when you're walking, driving, or biking downtown, watch for the streetcar. Say hi. Be smart, be safe, and get ready to ride. Ride KC. Learn more at kcstreetcar.org. Our Section 3 program basically helps uh, fund economic activity that assists uh, low-income individuals and contractors in specific target areas. For the East Patrol Campus, uh, this particular program was instituted because of the fact we did have federal funding. A lot of the uh, individuals that lived in the target area, which is in the 27th and Prospect area, were able to participate not only as workers on the projects, but as well as uh, contractors on the project. We stopped at the store right across the street, that one, right over there. And it was two gentlemen in there with the neon shirt on, and we were like, hey, you know, is, is they hiring? And they was like, as a matter of fact, they are, and they're looking for women. Go right over here to this trailer to Miss Gigi Owens. And that's what we did. This is an opportunity for them to get this certification and move out into the workforce arena and start working. A lot of people have skills, they work on houses, but to work on a project that's from gravel to a building, that's, that's unfounded in this community. Uh, first question I have, who was here 20 years ago? That's a pretty good representation. Uh, as we're all aware, uh, on the, the longest day of the year, uh, June 21st, uh, 20 years ago, this fountain was dedicated. That's a significant milestone in 
you know, fountains take, uh, at least the weather, I should say, takes a little wear and tear on your fountains. The uh, freezing and uh, flowing temperatures, the uh, humidity, uh, the, uh, of course, just the moisture itself takes a little toll on our fountains. So we've been involved in the uh, Wish Upon a Fountain campaign throughout our city, and a lot of great fountains are being restored just through the efforts of private fundraising efforts from the City of Fountains Foundation. And this is one of them today that uh, we want to make some announcements on our next step to reduce the necessary repairs to this particular children's found. The Missouri Department of Conservation encourages you to discover nature. This December, hang a bird feeder and invite our feathered friends to feast. One and a half million Missourians enjoy bird feeding. Watching a bird in flight can brighten a cold winter day. Bird feeding stations may be as simple as seed placed on the ground or as complicated as a feeder made for a specific species. The most commonly recognized bird in Missouri is the cardinal, which will be one of the first species to discover a new feeder. Purple finches and American goldfinches are also common to see. Try to place your feeder near trees, shrubs, or flowers that produce food and provide cover. To attract more birds, provide water, preferably year-round. For more birding tips, visit mdc.mo.gov. The City of Kansas City, Missouri celebrated America Recycles Day with a free collection event to help residents safely dispose of recyclable materials. The average Kansas City resident generates about seven pounds of trash per day, but only recycles a pound and a half per week. More than 600 participants brought their materials to the event, which resulted in five and a half tons of trash, one ton of brush, 1,800 pounds of paper, and 41 bicycles for Revolve KC, who will repair the bikes for donation to local kids. The city's fall curbside leaf and brush pickup continues for residents in the south zone. Pickup will begin December 7th, and the central zone pickup begins December 14th. Residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb on their regular trash day. Residents may also use the city's drop-off sites, which are open through January. Check our website at kcmo.gov and search leaves for locations, times, and drop-off fees. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.